This is a pretty interesting problem I want to do before I start the other lectures because they're going to be pretty math heavy. Um, and this one uses the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy from last chapter. Um, what we have is a ballistic pendulum and they used this back in the day to measure the muzzle velocity of bullets. They'd shoot the bullet into a block and make sure that the bullet embedded in the block and didn't shoot out the other side, right? That did not happen. It, it did embed inside the block. And it swung up some angle theta. And but they'd measure that angle, and just by that angle, they'd be able to figure out how fast the bullet was coming out of the gun. Okay, so we're going to conserve momentum and energy. We're given the mass of the bullet, uh, 0.004 kilograms. The mass of the block, 4 kilograms. We're given this length right here so that we can do a little trigonometry. Um, if this is 0.5 meters and it swings, I'm going to draw this bigger than 5 degrees, but it swings up 5 degrees. Then we want to know what this delta Y is that it just went up. And that's going to be used for the conservation of energy portion. Um, all right, so that makes this 85 degrees. That's a right triangle. And if we suck a toe of this, um, I get either 0.5 minus 0.5 sine of 85, or you could have gotten 0.5 minus 0.5 cosine of 5 degrees. Uh, same thing. Um, I'm gonna just leave that as delta y for now. And you can calculate that to be about 0 0.0019 meters. So it's not very much. That's why I drew the triangle quite a bit bigger. Um, so what we need to do is look at the fact that we have an impact here and the two things are moving off together. That says to me that we should do the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. And this is all in the x direction, so we can leave off some vector signs for now. Uh, the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block and they're going to move off together so let's just call that some final velocity and the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block um, well this thing is just hanging there initially so its momentum is zero and we can solve this for the final velocity which the whole system moves off together at and that would be the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. We don't know this still, but this all divided by the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. All right, um, let's call that equation number one. Um, let's also conserve energy. All right. Um, we're going to look at this right after the impact. And that's when this final velocity is relative, right? And that final velocity, if we looked at the kinetic energy, would be the mass of the block plus the mass. I'm sorry, the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. All squared. And that's all going to turn into... The gravitational potential which is the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block because it's embedded in the system 
times gravity times this delta y right there. So we can rearrange this and solve by putting getting rid of common terms we can say that the velocity final is equal to the square root of 2g delta y and we know what that final velocity is can set that equal to m b this is equation number two the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet all divided by the thing the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block all right so both of those things are equal to velocity final we can set one equal to two and solve for the velocity of the bullet. So the velocity of the bullet ends up looking like this, the square root of 2g delta y times the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block, all divided by the mass of the bullet and you should get something around 193 meters per second i think it's 193 point oh ish all right thank you